Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Well, today we're going to talk about conspiracy theories, first in the form of Russian collusion. The redacted version of the Mueller report is out, and unlike most people, I have actually read a fair amount of it. And here is what my uh, summary is. It doesn't particularly disagree with anybody else's. The paper clearly says there was no Russian collusion. Period. End of story. There was none. I would say, looking at it, that I would have to say that President Trump is kind of a scumbag. But to be honest, um, if you've been paying attention to him for the last 30 or so years or so, like I have, being a scumbag should not come as any kind of surprise to you. And there was no obstruction of justice. Now, as I predicted in a video that I made when the bar came, uh, summary came out, which was called No Russian Collusion, Why Is Anyone Surprised? Which you can see it is linked to in my description box below. The conspiracy theorists have glommed on to the obstruction part of the report. Now, here's the very simple reason why there was no obstruction. The fundamental precept of obstruction of justice is that there is justice to be had, in this case, collusion with the Russians. Without that, without having justice to be had, without having collusion, you are obstructing nothing. It is clear in the report that he occasionally talked to people about backing off the investigation or making statements that would undermine it, but nobody actually did. They just talked about it. It never actually happened. So there's no collusion there either. This whole thing is nothing but a conspiracy theory. It is no different than gay frogs, a Washington DC pizzeria running a child prostitution ring, chemtrails, or the flat earth. The sole difference is that unlike gay frogs, a child prostitution pizza, pizza joint, chemtrails, and the flat earth, this conspiracy theory was pushed by a press that has now proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that they are nothing more than rank propagandists. Nothing you see in the press is real. Nothing. It scrolls past in my lower third in every single episode because it is always true and it has always been true. In this particular case, their propaganda reveals that they, modern press is identical to their intellectual ancestor, William Randolph Hearst. He was one of the first media magnates who owned a whole bunch of newspapers, the main source that people got their information from, almost always the only source, at the end of the 19th and early 20th centuries, and he peddled conspiracy theories. I wanted to look at this. This is a front page from the uh, New York uh, Journal, which was one of the papers that he owned. L when you look at this, and when you know history, you know that nothing, almost nothing, on this page is true. William Randolph Hearst's peddling of this particular conspiracy theory was in part responsible for the United States going to war with Spain. Today's press is exactly the same. For some reason, they wanted to bring down the president via complete nonsense and total conspiracy theories. Nothing that you see in the press is real. Nothing. So, lest you liberals believe that I'm going to let the conservatives off the hook, I'm not. Conservatives are just as guilty of believing completely nutty things that amount to their own conspiracy theories. It's just that the press isn't endlessly pushing them for 22 months straight. Donald Trump and the government have been pushing them for even longer than 22 months, since before Trump was elected. Now I want you to remember something. I am a libertarian. I would not vote for a Democrat nor a Republican if you put a freaking gun to my head. And I know that to some people, this makes me a part of the problem. You think that because I'm not voting for your favorite candidate, it is helping the other candidate get in. Well, I'll tell you what, that's not my problem. If you want my vote, it's very simple. Get behind the principles in which I believe. If you don't do that, then it doesn't matter who, to me who wins. Neither of these candidates is acceptable to me. To me, having no skin in this game means that I don't have your blinders. I don't care which of those two parties are in power. To me, 
They are all socialists to some degree or another who demonstrably spend over 90% of their time violating their oaths of office to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, and in so doing, making the country and the world worse for everyone. They are all power-mad sociopathic narcissists in the textbook sense of the word, and I invite you to look it up. Look up antisocial personality disorder, commonly known as sociopathy. Look up narcissistic personality disorder. And to help you, I have given two links right at the top of my description box to those two disorders on Wikipedia. Look at the symptoms. You will see that enough of them apply that even a psychological layman can see that your favorite politician is some mix of sociopath and or narcissist. I have no skin in your game. I have no emotional attachment to your favorite politician. I have been paying no attention to propagandist press that I already knew wasn't real. So I can look a little bit more realistically about what both of these socialist sides are doing than anybody who's got an investment in them. So how are you conservative wrong? Where are you getting and what are your conspiracy theories? Well, mainly, we are not uh, in the best economy the U.S. has ever had. That is a lie. And the conservatives have bought into it hook, line, and sinker. Because, frankly, Trump is a fantastic narcissist and is capable of drawing you in to a cult of personality that revol revolves around him. Do you want to know the real state of the economy? Go to usdebtclock.org, and I put a link for that in my description box below as well. Now, it's a very admittedly a very busy page as it is constantly recalculating both government reported numbers and real world numbers about various things. But ignore the government reported ones. They are a tissue of lies. Government statements about anything have two goals. One is to reassure the public, reassure the public and the second is to intimidate any enemies or potential enemies. So these things, when they are put out by government, are always lies. Instead, look at the real numbers. Now, for purposes <laughs> of demonstration, uh, I screen capped this this morning, uh, the day that this is being recorded, Mar May 20th, 2019, at 506 Zulu. As I say, this is a very busy page, so I'll be pulling out a couple of the just the most useful numbers to show how we ha actually have a terrible economy that hasn't changed in decades that took a significant downturn in 2008 and has never recovered. And then I'll explain why it will never recover and how nothing Trump can say or do will cause it to recover. In fact, the United States is in a depression worse than the Great Depression. And this is provable with simple math that I will go through as I do it. So what I am going to show you here are some cutout numbers, just the ones that are going to be important when it comes to figuring out unemployment. You have to remember always the government numbers, the official numbers, are lies designed to reassure you. Ignore them. They are propaganda. So as of this morning, the U.S. population was about 328,792,669 individuals with 156,000 million, rather, 832,215 considered part of the workforce. And that means that they are capable of working. The officially reported unemployment number is 6,196,399, but remember this number is a lie. Uh, look at the actual unemployed up there, and you will see that the actual unemployed is closer to 11,948,678. That is a more accurate uh, note. Now, I realize that if you were born, if you were educated inside of the last two, th two to three generations, you may not know how to find a percentage difference between those numbers. Not your fault. I have an entire series that I did on the decline of American education. Uh, it's a link to below. I invite you to watch it. So in the, t in the interest of keeping you know, confusion to a minimum, I won't go into the mathematics of how it's done. But suffice to say that I did the math, and the government is ignoring 48.1% of the people who are unemployed, at least as reported unemployed. Now I want you to look at the uh, second column there where they say the workforce is 156,832,215 and that those not in the workforce, that bottom uh, one right there in the center, is 
583,690. Now, so to be fair, if we're going to do this, if we want to find the real labor force, that's going to include both of those who are counted as in the workforce and those who are counted as out of the labor force, which will give us a grand total of 252,415,905. Those are the number of people in this country who could have a job. And again, realizing how bad the ed educational system is, and again, look at my playlist, the link to below, America's Broken Schools. Uh, you probably don't know how to find percentage of actual unemployed. So to keep you from losing you, I'm, I've done the math. And it is a whopping 37.9% of the people in this country who could have a job that are unemployed. But you say to me, hey, wait a minute, you just told me that 11 million, well, almost 12 million, are reported as unemployed. How can that be true if 95 million plus uh, of the labor force, labor force is unemployed? The numbers don't match. Well, guess what, students? You get a gold star because you're damned right. They don't match. And that's because government always cooks these numbers. They always have. They always will. It doesn't matter who's president. They um, only count as unemployed those people who are presently receiving government benefits such as unemployment or welfare. They do not count as unemployed. People have been unemployed for so long that they are no longer eligible for any benefits. So if you've been unemployed since 2008 and you're now living homeless on a Los Angeles street or under one of Southern California's many beautiful overpasses, then guess what? You're not unemployed. So the real unemployment rate in the United States is actually 37.9%. That 37.9% includes the millions living on the street or who have flocked to Southern California because they can't possibly survive a Nebraska winter where I live. They're horrifying. This last winter was pretty terrible. And they don't need to worry about getting heat stroke in a Nebraska summer. As I, as I record this, it is currently... Uh, let me find the actual temperature. I'm not finding it. It is 84 degrees outside as I do this. This summer... As with every summer, it will get well above 100, could hit 115. Well, you go to Southern California, you don't have to worry about either of those things. So a lot of homeless are there. Almost 39.7% are unemployed. 95,583,690. Or, if you want to convert it into something maybe you can understand, that is more than six times the population of New York City, Los Angeles, and Chicago combined. 39.7%. By comparison, during the Great Depression, U.S. unemployment peaked at about 25%. Today's unemployment is 39.7%. So, we are not living in a growing economy. We are living in a massively decaying one, in which Southern California now looks like a third world country. And I say that rather specifically and deliberately. It's not, I'm not making some kind of, you know, over, over, generaliz over generalization. One of my oldest friends, uh, a guy I have, I have known since high school, does a lot of globe trotting. He's been to serious third world hell holes, like places in India that, you know, it would just terrify you if you saw and he says now that when he comes back and drives through Los Angeles, Southern California area, it honestly looks like a third world country. So I'm not saying that in any way to be um, overstating the case. It looks like a third world country, and that's because it's the easiest climate in which to survive. So most of our homeless are migrating out there. So government and narcissist-in-chief Donald Trump are lying to you. It is a conspiracy theory no more real than Russian collusion. It is just a conspiracy theory peddled by government. And here's the problem. We are in a massive economic depression, and it is impossible to recover for a simple reason. There really are no manufacturing jobs left in the United States. Historically, that's what employed all these people. And these manufacturing jobs will never be coming back. Now, if you've been listening to the narcissist-in-chief talk about all the companies back to the U.S., then you have been buying into the conspiracy theory because the numbers he talks about are paltry. I've heard him talk about maybe putting a couple of hundred thousand people back to work. And again, understanding, as I do, that if you were educated within the last three generations, you probably don't know the relationships between numbers. 
So let me show you this. We start with one. Now 1,000 is 1,000 times one. One million is 1,000 times 1,000. So a million is larger than 1,000. And if you go to billions, there's going to be an extra three digits on the end of that. It'll look like that. That's how you go. Hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, etc. That's how it works. So if Trump brought back 200,000 jobs, you still have 95,383,690 unemployed. So putting back to work 200,000, well, nice, will not affect those hundreds of millions who are making Southern California look like a third world country. It is impossible for the U.S. economy to rebound. And anyone who says that, that they can give jobs to, you know, that 37.9% of the labor force is lying to you. And that includes the President of the United States. If you have bought into the idea that the U.S. is in recovery or can ever recover, then you believe in a conspiracy theory that is no more rational than gay frogs, a pizzeria in D.C. running a child prostitution ring, chemtrails, or the flat earth. The U.S. economy is not recovering, nor will it ever recover. Its fate was sealed in the 1970s when manufacturing began leaving the United States, never to return. Because why should it? Why would you pay an American worker 20 bucks an hour when you can pay a Chinese worker a buck a month? The U.S. economy is not recovering, nor will it ever recover. And if you believe otherwise, then you have bought into a conspiracy theory that is no more rational than gay frogs, a pizzeria in D.C., running a child prostitution ring, chemtrails, or the flat earths. Conservatives, just like liberals, have been snookered by propagandists. So, where do we go from here? Well, for the propaganda, those of you who were taken in by propaganda, the conspiracy theories and the propaganda, you're going to face a difficult decision. You are going to have to admit to yourself that you were wrong. You're going to have to admit yourself that, like it or not, Trump won the 2016 election fair and square. Or that, like it or not, Trump has not created a recovery. The U.S. is in depression, far worse than the Great Depression, and it will never recover. Now, I know how difficult this will be for you because I have been massively wrong on one major occasion. And it was about something I was totally emotionally and intellectually invested in. And being wrong about it was hard to admit to myself. The fact that I was completely and 100% wrong about something that I was both intellectually and emotionally invested in for several years was one of the hardest and most humbling things that I ever had to deal with. So, in the interest of full disclosure, I'm going to tell you about when I bought into the conspiracy theory that turned out to be wholly and completely 100% wrong. And that was the Y2K problem. Now, I like to boast that I was in IT for 40 years. I was always considered good at what I did. I always was, frankly. In fact, I was so good at it that I taught it at a junior college for three years. But back in the late 1990s, knowing how some of our equipment, a fair amount of it really, was susceptible to the Y2K problem, well, I totally bought into the conspiracy theory. I made decisions that were inappropriate based on this belief. I advised others to do things and make decisions that were inappropriate based on this belief. And I even went to my congressman with it. And I was completely wrong. In reality, while Y2K certainly gave a lot of work to myself and my colleagues for a few years, we actually had a good handle on it well in advance. And when it came around, sure, there were a few unexpected bugs that we had to fix, but we fixed them quickly and that was done with. It was just a nothing burger. I was wrong. I was massively wrong. Being wrong was fantastically embarrassing to me and is to this day. It is the stupidest thing that I ever fell for, and I have been very, very leery about anything ever since. Because having to admit to others, and I did, I had to admit to family members, had to admit to friends and associates that I had been fantastically wrong, was embarrassing, it was humiliating, 
and it was absolutely humbling. So where do we need to go from here? What, what do you need to do as someone who bought into a conspiracy theory? What do you need to do? Well, to begin with, you need to admit that you were wrong. That's where you are now. If you believe that Trump colluded with the Russians or obstructed justice, or that we're in the best economy for half a century or more, then you were wrong. You were massively wrong. And being wrong will be fantastically embarrassing to you. Having to admit to others that you've been fantastically wrong will be embarrassing, humiliating, and humbling. But you have to do it, because to do otherwise will only make things worse. It will lead you to continue to make your decisions, poor ones, to dehumanize and to demonize anyone who disagrees with you. You must admit that you were wrong. You must also, oh, for God's sake, stop paying attention to the press. I talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. And I have two episodes on this whole subject, one of which is called Nothing You See in the Press is Real. The other one is called A Viewer Challenge, Debunk the Press. Both linked to in my description box. I invite you to go look at them because I demonstrate by walking through news stories using skills that I have honed over 30 years how nothing you see in the press is real. Even if it's a story about the local fire department getting a cat out of a tree two blocks away, you can be sure that the press got it wrong somewhere. You have to always remember, the job of any reporter is not to report the facts. Their job is to sell advertising. The facts are totally secondary, and I refer you to my two episodes for proof of this. You must stop paying attention to the press. They are propagandists who will spread any lie and any conspiracy theory as long as it sells advertising. If you see a TV news program about anything, even if you agree with it, change the channel. If you see a web news outlet, even if you agree with it, click away. And if you have a subscription to a newspaper, just cancel it. Nothing that you see in the press is real. Nothing. I can recommend, I've said it before, say it again, I can recommend solely one and only one news source, Agenda Free, excuse me, Agenda Free TV here on YouTube, run by Steve Luckner. There's a link to it in my description box. Uh, I like him because he uses my methods when he tries to discern whether or not some individual news story is true. Otherwise, forget it. Nobody does anything like the job he does. Nothing that you see in the press is real. Nothing. The next step is that you must stop paying attention to the politicians. Every single one, including your favorite, is, as I say, a power-mad sociopathic narcissist. They are consumed with a lust for power that you and I can never comprehend, and they will say or do anything to keep and acquire more power up to and including murder if they think they can get away with it. At the very least, they will always lie to you. Stop listening to politicians. Finally, and probably most importantly, stop. Stop voting for Democrats and Republicans. They are all power-mad sociopathic narcissists. By the textbook definition, look them up, links below. We could not have reached the place where we are now, with the worst depression in human history, with a public debt that is impossible to pay, and government intrusion into every aspect of our lives, without Democrats and Republicans, either tacitly or in the spirit of bipartisanship. Oh, and when they do something bipartisan, just forget it. That means you're screwed. But they have to be working together to bring us here. They are both equally to blame. Stop voting for them. If you keep voting for them, the only, they will only ever continue to do what they have always done, and that is to make things worse. Stop voting for Democrats or Republicans. Instead, find a different party, some party that represents your beliefs, and vote for them instead. And I don't even care if you vote for the Communist Party or the American Nazi Party, because at least they are honest about what they want. But for the love of all that is holy, stop voting for Democrats and Republicans. <sighs> so that is all that I have to say about that. <laughs> 
So thanks for watching. Feel free to leave your own comments. I'd love to hear what other people have to say. And if you like what I'm doing, please do like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me with social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I'd appreciate your support, either via subscribe star, my PayPal tip jar, or a link on my website where you can support me further, all of which are linked to in my description box below. So thanks for watching Tales from SYL Ranch, and remember, for a breath of fresh air, watch Tales from SYL Ranch where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.